Hey guys, it's your girl Ashley here, and I'm here with a haul. Uh, this is a mashup. I just went to Barnes & Noble to get some stuff. So we have a big Barnes & Noble haul. Um, put that down over here. And we have a haul and some other stuff. So I'm going to come closer so you guys can see. Um, I went to, well before that, this guy over here so you can see him. Um, I got this. I went to a separate haul of Harry Potter stuff that I got because my hubby spoiled me with Harry Potter stuff this month. But I got a nice Harry Potter blanket and it's all the chibi characters of Harry Potter. And it comes with a pillow. Um, it's really, really cute. So you can see it. It's really big. It's like 60 by 90. It's huge. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. It's nice and comfy and soft. And it comes with Harry Potter's face as a pillow. I got this at, he got it at Target. Um, I think it was like $17. Really, really cheap. Um, and that just came in the mail the other day. And then, uh, what else? Before we left, because we went out to do a little bit of shopping today. Um, Amazon came. And I got a new iPad case. I'm at 100% like... It's okay. It's not the greatest case right now. This is the case I had on my iPad. I forget who makes this brand. Uh, Bento. Bento Ben. Um, and I put a Thestral sticker that I got from Lori when I had my candy. And this was like one of my favorite cases. I put my iPad in it all the time. And it was starting to get a little bit worn on the edges and stuff because I use it all the time. And I could have honestly ordered the pink one. I should have ordered the pink one because I love this case and I use it all the time. Um, but I wanted something different. So I found this case. It says, so many books, so little time. And I thought it was really cute. Uh, the quality of this case is not that great. Um, came with a stylus. It has a magnetic uh, closure here. This case, like I guess it's, it's not the greatest case, honestly. Um, as you can see, let me just sign it so you guys can see um, what I'm talking about. It just, it's kind of flimsy on the side, and then it just sits in here, and then just sits like that. And there's a little, like, card slot, because I don't know why there's card slots there, but, but if you're watching a movie, this thing will get in the way, so I don't understand what that is there for, but... It's, it's an okay case. Um, so that came in the mail for Amazon. My pretty bracelet came in the mail. Um, and it's one of those couples bracelets. So if you can tell, you can see it. There is, probably this way you can see it better. Uh, it, it's a lock. So I can't take this off. Um, my hubby has the um, key and he, he unlocks it. And then I can take it off. So I think that's really cute and it's really pretty. And I love it and it's so cute. So. And then I just have my Harry Potter that I always have on there. I got that. Um, and then I got my Harry Potter backpack, mini backpack, that I love so, so much. Um, I love this bag. It's so, so cute. It has all the little Harry Potter characters on it. For some reason, they gave me all the bad ones. I don't know why. But, like, they gave me Malfoy and Lucius and... Uh, Voldemort and all the bad ones, but it's really cute. Like I love it, and I have all the matching accessories to go with it. Um, I have the wallet, and the cosmetic pouch, um, and I also have the uh, new Harry Potter water bottle cup which is in the refrigerator so I can't show it to you but that's what I got um and then at Barnes and Noble he surprised me he was so cute I was there looking for books um and he knew that I wanted this the last time that we, we were there I said I wanted it and it was too much money uh so we ended up oh and I did we ended up get, getting something else that I will show you later on in an update video um, but I said that I wanted it, but it was too much money, um, so I ended up, uh, I was going to look at books, so I showed it to him, I was like, oh, I was like, look, they have this here, and then I walked back to look for the books, because the guy was trying to help me find the books, <laughs> excuse me, that I wanted, and I went back to look, and I was going to pay for my books, and he was up front, and I'm like, what are you buying, because I know you don't really read books, so what, what are you buying, he's like, 
oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, like, Mr. Sneaky Pants. So I go outside, and he's like, here, babe. And, then, and, I, and I open it, and this guy is in the bag. He knows I love Nifflers, and he's a giant Niffler. So now I have three Nifflers. I have this big guy, a little guy, and a baby Niffler. And his hand comes off the coin. Oh, it's his hand. Comes off the coin, and, oh, I love Harry Potter. I'm just obsessed with Harry Potter. It just makes me happy. I don't care if people making fun of me, say I'm a nerd, whatever. I don't care. I love Harry Potter. It just, it makes me happy. And so, I love it. So thank you, baby. Um, so yeah, that's my new addition to my Harry Potter collection. So I got that. Um, so yeah, let's get into the books. Um, before we get into the books, you can see my Pokemon stuffy back there. Uh, we went over to Bar uh, Barnes Noble, GameStop, um, and I picked up, Hubby picked me up, uh, Magby, I think his name is, uh, for my Pokemon collection. We got Magby, and then I got two Pokemon games, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon X to add to my collection of games. And I think that was it at GameStop, because that's all I wanted. And Hubby picked up a PS4. So now we have a PS4, an Xbox, and a Switch. But he looks so cute. That's, the guy, that's what I got. So, into Barnes & Noble. So, I went there specifically to pick up, oh, any bomb you read the Redemption 2. Which I already had, but I beaded it and traded it in, but I wanted to rebeat it and play online again. So, he bought, he bought me that. So, I went there specifically picking up this book, which is Bloodleaf by Chris, Crystal Smith. First of all, beautiful cover, beautiful book. Um, this is going to be the book, I believe, in, um, look at the stars, I believe in the Shelf Love for this month, um, and Lori's going to get it, so of course we're going to buddy read it, because everything we get together we buddy read. And this is about, uh... A princess um, says princess is a prisoner to her own crown she can do magic um, says princess Aurora Aurora is prison to her crown and the air that nobody wants surrounded by spirits and banned from using her blood magic I'm just call her eggs I don't know how to say her name must flee her country after a devastating assassination attempt her only option her freedom lies within another ward, her betrothed Prince Valent. To escape her fate, A disguises herself as a commoner in a new land that discovers and, and discovers a happiness her crown has never allowed. As she forges new bonds and perfects her magic, she begins to fall for a man who is forbidden to rule beside her. But the ghosts that haunt her refuse to abandon her, and she finds herself succumb to their call as they expose a plot that only she can can defeat. Will she be forced to choose between the weight of the crown and the or in the freedom of her new life? <coughs> in a book that is devilishly creepy with a spellbinding edge, Smith has woven a dark and luscious political fantasy that layer that's layered with heady, heady, heady romantic magic and ghostly intrigue. Hi, Lori. She's messaged me. But yeah, so I got that book. So that's why I went there was to get this book, and then I went there to get. This beautiful copy of Victoria Schwab's The Near Witch. This is Barnes Noble Exclusive Edition. And this comes with an exclusive map and interview. They had one copy. The girl that actually brought me over to this was jealous. She was like, I'm so jealous you got this book. Um, because, oh wow, look at that. Look at how beautiful this book is. Um, because she's like, I would have bought that if I knew that, that we had this. Um, I believe this was her first book that came out and they re, redid it. Um, that's what it looks like. And look at that. There's the map. And it has a... Oh, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, that looks cute. I like that. <laughs> That's cute. Go ahead, you can show them. That's my um, I 
I'm a big fan of Zelda, so my surface, I uh, I put a um, some Zelda stickers on, and it looks really good. So <laughs> I'm proud of it. it. It looks good, babe. And this comes with a built-in bookmark, which books don't ever come with a built-in bookmark, so that's awesome. Um, and yeah, this is a really, really pretty copy. I did not know how beautiful this copy was. Like, this is awesome. Um, and yeah, this is, let's see, this is, the near witch is the, is, is, is uh, near witch is only an old story told to frighten children. If the wind calls at night, you must not listen. The wind is lonely and also looking for, for company. There are no strangers in the town of near. These are the truths that Lexi has heard all her life, but when an actual stranger, a boy who seems to fade like smoke, appears outside her home on the moor at, at night, she knows that at least one of these sayings is no longer true. The next night, the children of Nier start disappearing from their beds, and the mysterious boy falls under suspicion. As the hunt for the children intensifies, so does Lexi's need to know about the witch that just might be more than a bedtime story. About the wind that seems to speak through the walls at night, and about the history of this nameless boy. Part fairy tale, part love story. V.E. Schwab's debut novel is entirely original, yet achingly familiar. A song you hear long ago, a whisper carried by the wind, and a dream you won't soon forget. So yeah, I believe she published this already, and then they just revamped it or something. But yeah, beautiful cover, and I love that edition. So, while I was there, and the girl brought me over there, she's like, if you like V.E. Schwab, and you like her writing, um, definitely check out this lady. Uh, she writes just like Victoria Schwab, which I don't haven't really liked Victoria Schwab's books. I read, um, uh, what was it, the ghost one? Oh my god, I can't think of it. I read it though. I can't. It's on my bookcase somewhere. I can't think of it. The one that she wrote for a young adult. Um, I mean, not even for for, a, for middle grade. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, Ghost City or Ghost something. I read that one, and I haven't read anything else yet. Um, but she like, she writes she writes like that. So if you like that, you'll like this. And she told me the story behind this book, and it intrigued me right away. It's about this doctor who is a doctor to the undead, and I'm like was very intrigued by it. I'm like, okay. It's called Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. And the cover is beautiful, first of all. It says, Meet Gretchen Helsing, the doctor to the undead. Dr. Gretchen Helsing has, inher has inherited the family highly specialized and highly peculiar medical practice. She treats the undead for hosts of Ills, vocal strains, and banshee arthritis, and bower whites, and anthropes, and mummies. It's a quite supernatural ad adjacent life until a, sex a section of mysterious monks emerge, killing humans and undead alike. As terror takes a hold of the city, Gretchen must use her unusual skill to stop the cult if she hopes to save her practice and her life. So, it's set in London, and it sounded really good. And basically, like I said, she's a doctor to the undead, and she has to work with the undead and help them and help the other other people, because people are trying to kill the undead, which is weird because they're already, already dead. But it sounded really good, and the girl said the sequel just came out, um... And honestly, it sounded really, really good and really, really intriguing. So, I picked that book up. I got that one. And then the last book I picked up um, was I am watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer with uh, Lori. And I'm liking it. So, I wanted to get into the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I had gotten to it a long time ago, but I kind of forgot about it. Um, so, I forgot what I had read. So, this is the first novel... Sorry, my dog's walking back. Of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And the cover... The girl can... The girl could kind of, like, you know, maybe fix the covers a little bit. Do a revamp. But the first one is Dark Lover. For J.R. Ward. Um, 
And I felt so naughty when the guy was literally saying, oh, what's the name of the book? And I'm like, it's the first ser first in the series. And there was a woman with her baby right there. And he was like, oh, dark. <laughs> he said the name of the book. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep, that's the name of it. Like, I felt so weird. Like, so I don't know. She got to fix the cover or something. Because I don't know if I would feel comfortable reading that in public. I have to put something over that. <laughs> But, um, this is about, I reached my limit, but this is about vampires, and that's all I know about it, but it's supposed to be really, really good. And then, the last thing I got was a lighthouse book, and I got it for my mom, because my mom, I think I got this for like 10 bucks for her birthday, because her birthday is coming up, and it's got a bunch of lighthouses in it, and she loves lighthouses, and her birthday is next month, so I figured... She could have it as a coffee table book because she loves lighthouses. Now, I know tomorrow's supposed to be Chit Chat Thursday. I have a doctor's appointment, a couple of appointments, so I'm going to probably move the Chit Chat Thursday to maybe Sunday to Sunday. Alright guys, so after you have seen the Black Dagger Brotherhood, um, I literally stopped the video and forgot that I forgot to show you the last book I had. So we went to Newbury Comics, which is something I never thought that I would find a book at. But I did find a book for eleven ninety nine, um, and that was it was on sale. I'll be gone in the dark. One woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer, uh, by Michelle McMara, I think it is. Um, this was twenty seven ninety nine on sale for twelve dollars, um, and I believe the lady that was writing this actually passed away um, while writing this. And she actually did find the Golden State Killer, I believe. I don't really know much about it, just about that. Um, that's all I kind of know about it. Um, oh, that's Instagram thing. But, uh, yeah, that's all I know, and it's basically her talking about it. It says, a masterful true crime account of the Golden State Killer, the exclusive serial rapist turned murderer who terrorized California for over a decade. So I think it's going to be really cool to listen to the audiobook, and it was 12 bucks, and that was awesome. So yeah, this is the last book that I found. My last book in my book haul. Um, but yeah, so, like I was trying to say, um, does Chit Chat Sunday work for you guys? Because tomorrow I have a appointment, um, Friday I have Weight Watchers, and Saturday my mom's coming here to help me clean out my back bedroom. So does Sunday work for you? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And like I always say, keep calm, read on, shop on, and be kind to each other. Bye, guys.